swiftly and conduct a thorough, transparent, and fair investigation. Now, catch this, family. Lieutenant Gene Ryan, president of the union that represents rank and file officers, also said he believed that the commissioner took the appropriate action by suspending the officer pending investigation. Ryan said he there might be more to the story that he doesn't know, but at the first review of the video of the incident showed inexcusable behavior on the part of the officer that the department can't tolerate. Ryan said officers are allowed to use force when individuals are resisting arrest, but the man in the video did not appear to be acting in an aggressive manner. Finally, Ryan again. I would like to believe that there's more to do it to, to it, but obviously it really makes us look bad. There's something we we don't need right now. We don't need another black eye. The attorney Warren Brown said he hopes the city officials take the matter seriously because the treatment of his client is inexcusable. The hatred almost that you could see on the officer's part, the way we just he just beat this guy down was startling. It's such an ugly act that has such a de 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 damning impact on the city as a whole, the police department, the police community relations. It's not just an attack on my client. It's an attack on the whole community. That's the words of the... And of course, we did find out that the officer on the video beating the man resigned. He resigned on a late Sunday night, and uh, T.J. Smith uh, has a statement, the officer involved in yesterday's incident is no longer with the Baltimore Police Department. The commissioner has accepted his resignation. The second officer remains on administrative duties. This remains an active criminal investigation. Whew, goat? Well, the bigger picture is, is he may have resigned, but the culture still remains. And this is not an isolated situation. You know, maybe to the extent of brutality, but in terms of police disrespecting citizens, it's almost a weekly occurrence. And as I've said a number of the times, Larry, that nothing will change in the city, crime or anything, until first and foremost, the police department changes in their perception. Because you know, how many times we, we talk about how come folks aren't saying anything? How come folks aren't coming to the police? And folks call up and say, Larry, coach, they don't trust them. They look at the, the police, and not at all, but in most cases, as the enemy. So it's a trickle-down effect that's arming the city in more ways than one. Every line's lit. When one is available, I'll let you know so that you might be able to join. They've been calling in to 410-481-1010, 410-481-1010. Larry, before we go to the line, did you have you want anything else you want to offer? No, I just... um. You just hear that? I just let you know what he said to me. That's right. Larry said, "Ever the cab driver uh, at the, the right there with uh, the young man and had a chance to talk with him. How much time did y'all have together, Phil? Oh, about a half an hour. We yeah. could have stayed longer, but you know, but he was it. all in pain and yeah. sore and all that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Let's go and hear what Smitty. Hey, man. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Senator. Senator, I first want to thank Larry, the celebrity crab driver, for all that he's done in helping us with this investigation. But, Senator, it's clearly that we need to go to these pensions that these police are receiving. We're, they're causing taxpayers' money lawsuits, and we're not doing anything but letting them resign. And when they resign, they go to another state and get a job. We need to stop these type of people the way that they think and the way that they treat our people in the community when they've been given authority to have a gun. This other police officer should have been fired immediately as well is because this young man could not do anything for himself because he's got two officers on him. They both have guns. This young man did not resist any arrest. And I don't see why it takes so long to have these investigations when we can look at film and see it clearly what is taking place. 
we waste so much time with all this special investigation and all these other things, and we come up with no results. It sounds just like Freddie Gray case all over again to me. And if someone hadn't have been there and learned a celebrity cab driver just knowledge that 40 minutes this, this guy was not given any hospital, taken on the side of the road or somewhere wherever they want to take him. That's what he said. Clearly that these, that these police officers need to be this far and no pension, and the taxpayers shouldn't have to pay for this lawsuit that's coming up. We got to start the, we got to break this mess up in this community. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, Brother Smitty. Yes, sir. There's a line available for you. Robert? Hey, man. I couldn't believe what I saw. Same I mean, here. that was a down goes Frazier beatdown. Yes, sir. And for him to totally lose it, knowing people are standing there with their cameras, I mean, he's a criminal with a badge that was a first-degree assault. And I ask any of you, what would have happened to Mr. McGreer if the roles would have been reversed? Would that timid clown that just stood there while the officer wailed on Mr. McGreer, he stood there like a referee in one of these wrestling matches down at the uh, Civic Center. Just wouldn't even break it up, wouldn't even t tase the officer. I would, on the jury, Mr. McGreer, Warren Brown, I'm glad to see you back in the chips. I would give you every penny you ask for. This man's rights was violated, he was brutally beaten, and this officer belongs in jail waiting for a bail hearing. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a, there's a line available. It's 13 after 8. Let's go to Mosey. Mosey. Yes, sir. Good morning, Senator Coons. Hey, look, man, I'm just like your last caller. When I saw that, man, my mouth was, I, mouth just flew up and said, oh, my God. But, man, as you, as, as you see from this video or this phone taping that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And the bottom line is, you always say, Coach, the people that things like this affect the most don't get out and vote. This is what people have to start doing. Getting out there to them polls and changing this leadership because, at the least, it's incompetence from the top to the bottom. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Line available. Leo. Good morning, uh, Larry Good morning. and Coach and everybody. How are you? Good morning, partner. Well, I'm disgusted and I'm outraged as are all citizens uh, of, of like minds in this city. Uh, you know, uh, Officer Arthur Williams, uh, I'm hoping that the state's attorney will indict him very shortly. He should be arrested today, um, obviously for brutality, uh, police misconduct, and attempted murder. Because the way... The way he was wailing on uh, McGrea indicated he wanted to kill him. He had a an animus. He had a. This was a retaliatory beef, apparently, uh, that he engaged in, and he didn't care about the consequences. I think the full weight of the law should fall upon Officer Arthur Williams, or he has resigned. But that doesn't mean anything. I want him brought before the bar of justice and prosecute it to the full extent of the law. It's interesting that Lieutenant Gene Ryan, the Fraternal Order of Police, has a double standard. Lieutenant Brian Rice is still on the force. He's the one that initiated the attack against Freddie Gray. He's still on the police force. Lieutenant Stephen Bagshaw is still on the police force. He stole that money at the Horseshoe Casino, the felony theft overtime. So there's still a double standard and we don't know where the fraternal order of police stand other than they play games. And they're not where they need to be either. So I, I heard what you said about Gene Ryan, but Gene Ryan is not a friend of the black community. Although this is not just a black and white issue, this is a matter of systemic institutional racism. And somebody's going to tell me, well, this is not institutional racism because the officer in, involved is black. No, the officer... Is, is reflective of, of group self-hatred, his animus, his anger for this guy, a personal beef, and he's operating within the parameters. For sure, for sure. Here you go. It's 15 after an hour. If there's one line available for you to join us. You can certainly do that. And we're going to have a conversation with the other fine uh, representative of the community that was there with a uh, large celebrity cab driver, and she'll be up with us right after this information break. We're taking right now. It's 16 after 8 here on 1010 WOLB. 
Good morning, good morning. It's uh, 18 after 8 here on 1010 WOLB on this Monday, August the 13th. We're looking at 73 degrees, going to go as high as 82. Back down to 68. It's going to be a cloudy day. Uh, we have with us uh, Larry Snub, the cab driver. Uh, he was able to go down to the um, hospital there where this uh, where Deshaun was or is mm -hmm. and uh, had a chance to have a 30 minute conversation with him and pray with him and uh, he was just telling me during the break that one other statement was made uh, by the young man uh, to those who were in the room. What was that other statement you said? He's, the other statement was wow this is really going to get it uh, prior before this, he said, I wish it could just be me and you somewhere. Now, y'all gonna have to figure that out on your own, what that means in your own mind, that he wished that they could be somewhere alone. I said, wow. As I stated, uh, Larry was down there at the hospital, uh, but also, Christina? Good morning, Eli. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You better say hello. To, you better say hello to JJ too, because you know. Hey, JJ. Yes, <laughs> all of the above in there. Yeah, I got you. Yes, okay. ma'am. You know, Eli. Yesterday, yeah. you know, it's like maybe a handful of us woke up on the wrong side of this. Just really wanted to be somewhere to be able to focus on what what took place Saturday, mm -hmm. and um, yes, being able to go down to the hospital to visit the Shaw was a uh, a very eye-opening experience to hear this young man, mm -hmm. how he described everything. And, and and it's like, at the same time, we as a community and individuals, uh, we need to understand our strength in numbers right now because with the resignations and the terminations, I'm pretty sure our city was uh, prepared to, to, to seek some answers because um, this brother was beat up pretty bad, and it's been a long term. Like, it's just been a long, outgoing situation with Deshaun in this office, and it probably should have been dealt with. But at the same time, some of our individuals on the streets feel like they have nowhere to go when they're trying to seek justice for situations like police harassment. Um, and, and that's what it sounds like to me. A lot of harassing been going on. A lot of different situations that got to the point where this officer just lost all self-control. But um, I was just grateful. I wanted him to know how grateful he was that he did practice so much humility. Because that was the whole thing, his humbleness and not hitting back and not striking back. And um, just like everybody thought, because he was fearful that, you know, the partner would have started shooting. You know, in, in, in every situation. Do we, know, do we huh? know the basis of this harassment? You know, the, the foundation, why the police um, had it out for the young man? Well, Coach, this is the 2500 block of Miami Street. And, you know, we down in this area, you know, you got some high targets. Like, they target certain people. So he feel like, you know, he was always in the midst of creating a peaceful atmosphere. He felt like he was advocating for a lot of individuals, and it always kept him getting involved with this negative officer. That's what I would have took from it. Like, he felt like, you know, as I speak up and say something, his officer targeted him. So he felt always targeted by this officer. Um, at, the, at the end of it, you know, it, it just, again, the officer just lost that sense of control, and that sense of control just took it out of line because it could have been so much more after this, you know, marble steps, heads, hidden places. So, you know, we just got to recognize as a city right. that, yes. No, I'm just saying thank you. I'm just, I'm gonna, if every line's living, we're going to get these folks in. I want to thank you and Larry for finding your way down there. Uh, oh, yeah. to uh, to uh, pray for the young man and to uh, be able to share uh, what happened from uh, from what he uh, shared with you. It's my understanding that uh, there will be a press conference uh, if, uh, if today, and uh, so uh, we got a little bit advance on it. But again, thank you both for 
for caring enough to call in. All right, let's uh, 